Right, I'm going to just uh, begin, Karen, just by asking, I mean, how much do you think we need this movie right now? It just seems like such a perfect time for this film to be released. Oh, we do. And it's such a feel-good film. It's wonderful. And I think it sort of brings some ray of sunshine into people's lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you think it is about this little bear that has such kind of worldwide appeal? I mean, it's been translated in over 30 languages. It's sold uh, over 30 million copies. I mean, it's just something... What is it about him that just, I don't know, taps into our imaginations around the world? I think it's his character. And because my father believed in him so much, he was so real to my father when he created him that he's real to other people. Uh, they love the fact that Pannington is very well-meaning. and He gets himself into terrible scrapes. You know he will, but you also know that he'll come out all right in the end. And I think people love that about him. I mean, your, your father was, uh, was so kind of invested in, in the first movie. I mean, was that, that must have given the filmmaker so much license with this sequel, knowing that it kind of that it had his blessing, I suppose. <laughs> I think it did. Uh, and I think that all the filmmakers knew that he had total confidence in them. The first time round, you know, we were all a bit nervous as to how it would turn out and then realised we didn't need to be at all. So second time around, yeah. It's and I mean, it must be quite an emotional experience for you watching this, but just seeing this creation, this, this, which is I mean, such, so close to your family and obviously to your father, just being brought to life so kind of emphatically on the big screen and seeing audiences and children alike just kind of appreciating it. I mean, it must be quite overwhelming, I suppose. Very. In fact, when I saw Paddington on screen for the first film, just his image... I actually cried because he it brought to life a member of our family. It was just amazing. Because I mean, to, but to counteract that sort of pride somewhere, is there is there a sense of protectiveness? I mean, I guess is this must be a character and a whole kind of um, uh, a, a brand, I suppose, in some ways that you feel quite um, uh, precious about. I suppose. As oh, well. very protective. I think for my father, it was a bit like ha- with, with particularly with the film, handing over your child. Um, halfway through growing up and saying, right, now you take it, take it over and you, you bring it up. It was a bit, bit like that. So you do feel very protective. And I mean, how, how involved were you in, in, regard, in, in this sequel? I mean, did, did you spend much time on set? Did you have many conversations with, with Paul? I mean, were you involved in the kind of filmmaking process prior to, to it sort of start to, prior to the shoot, sorry? Not the actual filmmaking itself, but the uh, original script uh, was certainly um, read that right at the beginning and given an opportunity to, to make comments and to... Um, and, and I think the fact that was always there in the background, if needed to be called upon, um, was perhaps a sort of... Hopefully, useful comfort. That I didn't need to be because they, you know, they knew what they were doing. And it must be quite. It sort of shows off and celebrates London as well on screen. I mean, because I guess given the entry point is this kind of foreigner who comes out with this perspective. I mean, I guess we kind of appreciate the beauty of the city through his eyes. Because I'm, I'm, I'm from London, so yes. I kind of forget how beautiful a city is when, because when you live here. But when you see it through his kind of quite blissful, quite optimistic sort of viewpoint, it really reminds us what a great city it is. I think you're right. And actually, the last few days when I've been driving through London and I've looked around, I thought, wow, it is a beautiful city. <laughs> and it does, it does remind you to actually look at it again, because I think we all tend to take it for granted if we live here. Mm. And how, how, how vital is the, the, and specific is, is this particular location in West London? I'm, from, I'm actually from Westbourne Park, so that whole area right. I know really well. But I mean, given Paddington, because I'm assuming he was based on the West Indian community that came over to, to London in the sort of 60s? Well, yes, my father was living uh, in Arundel Gardens just off Labbrook Grove when he wrote the very first book. So I think that's probably what inspired him to have Paddington living there. It was his, his neck of the woods, really. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. And uh, I've just got to ask as well, I mean, you, you, might just, you might just end up lying about this, just protect the brand, but do you actually like marmalade? I do. Oh. And, it, and I'm not lying. I actually oh. make marmalade uh, and eat it on a very regular basis. Oh. See, I just, I can't get, I, I, I can't, I, I want to like it, but it's just... Have you tried it with me. cheese? No. It's very good with cheese in a sandwich. Yes. All right, there we go. A good <laughs> tip. Um, and I was just wanting to, I mean, when you, now when you, you picture uh, the characters uh, that your, your dad created, not, not Paddington himself necessarily, but the Browns and all the kind of su- supporting roles, did you now imagine the actors in your mind? Uh, or do you still have the original kind of drawings when you picture them? I, the- I kind of didn't, they, they were much more shadowy characters in, in, the, in the books. Um, they're much stronger in the film. But now I see Hugh Bonneville as Mr. Brown. I can't imagine anybody else playing the role. I think he's just brilliant. Because, yeah, I mean, the casting is incredible, and particularly Hugh Grant in this film is, is, is a sort of revelation. Oh, fantastic. Mm. He's very funny, and I just love him in this role. I think it's, it's brilliant. So uh, my final question really is just sort of what the future holds for, for the Paddington franchise and brand. I mean, have there been talks for a third movie? Would you be supportive of, of this sort of continuing on? Totally. There's got to be a third one. I mean, the first and two now have been so brilliant. 
it's it's got to be a third one. I hope so, anyway. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!